It's Amina's House Podcast. Amina, say what? Welcome to episode 148. We have uh, Paloma Ford joining us today. The gang is all here. I'm Shayna B. Sherlock Homeboy, a.k.a. Garnett Briscoe. How y'all doing? <laughs> Dexter, a.k.a. Dex the One. You look cute today, Garnett. Where you going? Looking like a snack. Nowhere. I went. I went walking in the park today and stuff. You know, I got some exercise in. Yo, we get a garden. Do you guys? Well, not YouTube, but like people watching. You guys have to follow him on social media. Every yeah, week. that's what I was about to say. Oh <laughs> man, he got way more clothes on than in his current social media posts. And did you? <laughs> did you have on leather Hanes? Like, where where do you find that? At? No, so, 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 they were the leather shorts, and then I had my own boxers. They were the gray. That was my own boxers. Oh, I, okay. I wasn't putting my, I don't know who the hell was wearing that. I, I'm not putting that on, so, you know, I just put that over top of my own, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you are um, a very diverse man, because you go from wearing black Speedos <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and a dominatrix outfit to looking real nice when we went out for dinner. Yeah. yeah I, I, I thought all of us looked beautiful. And dinner dinner was actually amazing. Like, I'm so happy that we had that time together because yeah. I felt like we haven't all been together, you know, in so long. So to get, like, that quality time in, I, I thought that was, like, super dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, I well, you was out here acting a damn mess, so we couldn't risk getting the corona. <laughs> <laughs> Kissing baby. Right, hugging people. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm still out here functioning. I'm we out. we had to wait for the uh, corona uh, numbers to go down to see you. They they about to go back up. I'm just saying, then they're going back up. So we take it out. You I went to Chipotle up. today. I went to one of the Chip- uh, Chipotle and Cherry Hill um and you have to order uh on a mobile app again now i went there yesterday on sunday the numbers went up no the numbers went up overnight even in philly the numbers last thursday i was on flight i landed it said our numbers we went up like 163 which was 63 the week before today i just got the alert before we got on the pod it said 276 New cases just today, like mm. their results came back. But you can see, like, they're starting to rise. Well, mm. Donald Trump is out here with no mask on, infecting people. Mm. So, everybody, <laughs> Secret CIA, Service, FBI, <laughs> Secret Service, everybody, everybody got quarantined because of his ass. So irresponsible. Isn't he back at the uh, White House? Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Probably making more people sick. Walking around with no mask on at <laughs> the White House. And they're encouraged not to wear masks because he don't like it. So everybody just gets sick. Mm. Mm. Trey Songs is sick now. I saw that. Did you see I that? that. <laughs> Who else? Uh, one of the football players got sick. Cam- Cam- was it Cam? Is- Cam, yeah. Yeah. And Cam now Kim got Kardashian it. is saying Kanye had Kanye it. Kanye had it. Yeah, we knew that, though. He said that. Yeah, <laughs> you know Kanye be snitching on himself. Yeah, he gonna tell. You all know, his you know, you can't trust him when he said it. it was like I got COVID. No, so I believe. I believe. Company. It was like, wait, what? <laughs> no, I believed him when he said wait, that. But you know, me. wait, what? <laughs> he be having the streams of consciousness. So he <laughs> says <laughs> one thing, and then he's on to the next. Doesn't mean what he said was it true. He just says he was. He's on right. to the next thing. <laughs> um. So, uh, Paloma Ford is joining us today. You might uh, remember her from the I Don't Know uh, Meek Mill song. I mean, at least that's when I first learned about her. So uh, she got a project out, so we'll talk to her today. But before she hops on, let's try to get a couple of things in. Uh, a lot of stuff in our feed. Um, you know, people in COVID is a big thing. Uh, I, I stumbled on someone's penis in my feed. <laughs> I don't it's ridiculous on social media now like you can literally stumble on body parts did you see Suki like go like giving fellatio on social media well I didn't see the video I saw the ass right I saw the photos too but the photos were really graphic I saw her whole vagina we just had her on the pod (laughs) well in Suki's defense 
I looked for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it didn't just pop up. <laughs> I didn't I didn't look. It was just there and I was like, "Oh wow. Okay, she, you know, we talked about the wolf pussy. She don't got a whole wolf like it's not super hairy." <laughs> It's like a little trail, but the fact she that I saw it, it, it I know, but to see it, like, it's one <laughs> thing to see it, and it's another thing for someone to say something. So, um, these body parts keep popping up in my feed, so I can't, I, I don't know what's going on with Tyga, but. I know he, what's going on. He's a always lot. putting out naked stuff, and I really just don't like it, even when he blurs it out. Like, he puts up naked chicks all the time, and he's been doing it recently. And he even blurs them out. I'm like tired of seeing naked people on my timeline. He's no, doing I, I, fans I, I, too. What? He's doing an OnlyFans page. I don't know if that was a rumor or if that's true, but I I was saying something about he's joining OnlyFans. He is on there, I think. I mean, I'm not on yeah, there, so well, I don't I, know. I saw the picture uh, that he released with like the him sitting around with the girls around him, and he had one girl doing something to another girl. Uh, Tiger out here trying to live his best life. I get it. He, I, he's out here trying to function. <laughs> but I don't understand but, how like, Instagram and Twitter doesn't take these pictures down. Like I, I get, I get that everything's blurred out, but it's sexual innuendo. Isn't that against the guidelines? I, when I saw him in his full man on Twitter, it was nothing blurred out. It was just a photo <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> Well, there's okay, so there's two conversations going on because I think prior to the penis being out on social media, I started to get annoyed with him in general because the past couple of weeks he has been posting pictures of him and all these women, right? And everything is blurred out, and I'm like, how is social media still allowing this to be? I, I mean, if this is on your OnlyFans, that's cool, people are going to your OnlyFans to see these naked people, but in my timeline, like. I but that's how you have to preview it. I didn't right. know. I I thought these OnlyFans. I didn't see anything with just him. I saw like it was mostly like women that were naked. That I that I right. Saw. I I didn't see anything with him. I just saw like the picture that Garnett um described, where the one girl was sitting up with her legs open, another girl was in between her legs. I'm, wow. Okay. Um, right. Saw, and to your point, Mina, like I, it. I don't necessarily know if it was blurred out or not. I just saw like. I saw that picture and I'm like, wow, that's, that's a lot for social media. Right. Well, I, and I was going to say, I think what happens is they don't necessarily catch it all unless you report it. I reported it and they said so it doesn't say, violate, yeah. it doesn't violate any guidelines. Oh, I'm like, how does this not violate any guidelines? Wow. These women are naked and their body parts are blurred out. But Jason Derulo puts up a, a man print. And you don't see none of his body parts and it's, it gets taken down. Oh, I don't understand weird. why women being naked on social media is like, okay, well, who cares? It's not a violation of our guidelines anymore because their body parts are blurred. Unless well, let me say this about... Breastfeeding. They'll pull that down. <laughs> right, that's true. <laughs> but I was going to say with Instagram, when you do, do the like, if you're the first one to report it, it actually will like... I, I kind of don't like that. Like that, they just send you that generic response. Like, oh, it yeah. doesn't violate. Like, it takes a lot for them to actually look into it. It's almost like they have a bot. Like, we don't really have time. Thank you for reporting it, but we ain't really got time for this. And, and I don't like that about it. Like, it takes a lot for them to get to. Like, okay, maybe we should look into this. Yeah, but my timeline's becoming porn. Like, yeah, I mean, it was, that's it was, why it was going there. It was, it was I mean, there. I saw Tiger's whole penis on Twitter. I did. Now I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> now I know not to click the Tiger hashtag because I know what's there now. <laughs> I didn't even kick. I didn't click a hashtag. It popped up. Like maybe the algorithm is set. I, I, I want to see. <laughs> And then did you see the meme with my favorite meme about people with big penises is the Pikachu where yeah. the Pikachu's looking at the shadow and the shadow's like, it's like a huge like cucumber and the Pikachu's like, <laughs> no. But to your point, I knew what I was looking for. I was surprised I actually mm. found it because it was so many hours after I was like, oh, they definitely took this down. And I was like, oh my God, they did not take this down. Now, was this an accidental leak or he put this out there? 
That's what I'm co- I'm confused about because yeah. I've been seeing a lot of nudity on his behalf. And I think what's happening is people are putting this stuff on OnlyFans and people, and that's, this is leading into our conversation later. This is why I wanted to have a conversation about OnlyFans later. I think it's leaking onto the regular website and Tiger's using it, like some of the, his captions, not the regular website, but like regular social media. Tiger's captions were like, follow me on OnlyFans. So I guess like, okay, well, if you want to see the girl's full vagina, you go on OnlyFans. But what I don't understand is why in my Twitter and Instagram timelines, I'm now seeing all these sexual things. Like, I feel like OnlyFans is changing all the other social medias, it seems like to me. Like, Suki's picture is still up there. What? Yeah. No, I, I said Twitter is just like a world within itself. Always has. Facebook is one of those where it's just videos get posted and it goes everywhere because it's so easy to share. But uh, yeah, the OnlyFans definitely plays a part. Like there's a thing called Twitter porn, <laughs> just like it's called Black Twitter. There's a thing called Twitter porn, and that's where a lot of the people, I guess, you know, share their OnlyFans, and that's how you know that that kind of stuff goes viral and ends up, you know, on different timelines. I just, I mean, we're all home, so it really doesn't matter, but imagine being at work and it's you're right. scrolling and Tiger's penis is there. Like, yeah, at least you went to go searching. I didn't search for his penis. It just hit my screen out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to say, to your point, that was what some of the rumors were. Some of the rumors were he knew that this girl was going to leak it, so he had been leading up and I guess stage those other photos to his OnlyFans. Like he tried to take advantage of the opportunity because apparently somebody was supposed to be trying to extort him or something over it. That over was the rumor. Bi- over his big penis? <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got, listen, he ain't got no problems going on his DMs right now. <laughs> right. And, you know, that's another conversation that I wanted to have, like, with the OnlyFans. Like, and we'll have this conversation later, but, like, you know, does it would it bother you to date someone that puts their body parts all over social media? Like, I don't understand what I don't understand is the rhetoric behind, oh my god, Tiger has a big penis. Let me slide into his DMs. Cause I saw a lot of that. Mm-hmm. I like, saw a ton of that. I might have yeah. been in there. Like, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> You'll get <a> COVID. <laughs> because he's been around a lot of people clearly from his pictures clearly (laughs) but you guys like if you see body parts on social medias would you guys slide into a girl's dm because of that like i think that's a woman thing does that happen to men what do you mean like if a woman posting like naked or something yeah like like, would we slide into her dms (laughs) yeah yeah you guys do that yeah i think that's like what i think that's yeah she she's telling you to do that. She's asking you to do that. I would probably slide into hers before I slide into yours. Like you 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 do too much. You be out here working and going to dinners and being fully. <laughs> like, it's like nobody got time for that. She, she talk, next. that girl is serious. She's serious yeah. in her life. But the ones that are naked on social media, it's like oh she's she's out for a good time. So that will make okay because I almost feel like men would probably be like, "Oh, this girl's body parts are all over social media. Nah. I don't want to slide into her DMs." No, I'm 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 pretty sure there's some men like. Does that. anybody have any decency anymore? Well, I mean, pretty much no. I don't think we do. <laughs> it's 2020. Everybody pretty much you know messed up a little bit. So, uh, but now as far as that, I don't think that. Uh, deters men from like still pursuing that woman wow. by any means. But that's also, don't y'all teach us like not to judge a book by its cover? Like, don't y'all want it to just be more? Well, when the cover is cover? bare. <laughs> yeah, but still. Still though. That could just be That's crazy. That could Yo, let me tell you work. something. You know how many times guys have slid it, and this is kind of similar. Guys have slid into my DMs and just sent me their penis, and I'm like, ew, this yeah, isn't cute. Like the inappropriate. It's the same penis. thing. It's the same thing. Well, you you're saying a girl being physically like close to nude on social media would that make them want to slide in their DMs versus a guy just sliding in your DMs unannounced, just 
peen in your face. Right, but what's the difference between you see a big peen or on social media and you pursue the person versus the person oh, okay. sending you a big peen? It's the same thing. Like, I just think it's disgusting either way. Well, if you're putting <laughs> your penis on purpose on social media, yes. Which again, in Tiger's case, we don't know. He could be. But if it's somebody else like leaked it out there, that's not really like the person's fault. Like even when it happened with Safari, I was still kind of questioning it. Like, was it by accident? Or you know, because again, now with these celebrities, it becomes something new. Like Safari got a dildo deal because of that. And, and he, you know, and so he, his only fans too. Him yeah, and, so it's yeah, like you don't know sometimes with these celebrities. But yes, if it was an average, and and I'm not saying it's okay because it's celebrity. But if it was an average guy, just like hey, let, perfect example on a dating site, dating app. When I was on the dating app, this one guy. He had one picture of him cooking and three penis pictures. And I was like, wait, is this uh, on the dating app? app? On the dating app. And I they didn't don't know. flag like, that. Like, you know, you scroll and I was like, whoa. Oh. That's not that's not your face. And it wasn't even banging for you to be doing all that. Like, but you know, that. just just a real quick point His to food make. Might have been good though. His food might have been good. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a real quick point to make though, like for because I hear women a lot say like guys always send me unsolicited penis pictures, so a lot of women do this. There's two things that happen. One, guys send penis pictures and they work. Like there, that guy has sent that penis picture to to a woman and she yeah. responded to it favorably. That's one thing, and then two guys see like when these pictures of safari and tiger and all these celebrities when these pictures come out guys aren't the one tweeting about it and talking about it women are so we think that y'all are okay with it we think y'all want that so that's why we do it y'all just want to just send unsolicited you wake up in the morning you're like wait wait what you just know know your name because look okay so tiger has i see tiger's penis in my timeline right first i'm like ew why is this on my timeline but then i'm like oh wow that's big and then i'm like (laughs) but when i see tiger i'm not gonna be like yo what's up let's hang out tonight like no i've seen your penis on the internet everyone else has seen your penis on the internet i don't need to see it i don't want to see it you put you keep it away but i just i don't understand the rhetoric of this person's penis is on the internet. I'm going to approach them. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. get it. This is what I'm saying about you. You're a woman about your business. I'm going to be like, Tiger, I'll meet you later after the interview so I can but see it. Like, no. goes in his DM, like, Tiger, I'll meet you later. No, nah, because this is your only fan. <laughs> there, there's there's some women I'm I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, that just want to kind of cut like straight to the chase. Like, size is supposed to matter to a lot of women and you putting in work and then you finally get to it and maybe he ain't got what you want and it's like damn mm-hmm. so I, I i really think if women if women had a choice of like a superpower if they could like see a guy's penis or not see it all of y'all would probably say i want to see it but i want to see it on my own terms i don't want you yeah. to put it in my face when i'm not ready for it now <laughs> it's like you whipping it out when it's not appropriate right, like, like we have steak 48 and you just whip it out right yeah, like wait, what, what, yeah i want to like, see it but not right now I like I, I, I need like two weeks like three dates more yeah then maybe at that time some people want to see it now and yeah. they, and that's the one that it, it works on like dex was saying all right moving on uh meek bell said something that kind of piqued my interest and it it kind of reminded me of my personal life, one of my ex-boyfriends. So you know how there's like these things on social media where people just state their opinions or whatever. So one thing was said, uh, if a dude has two baby moms, what goes through your mind wanting to be the third, right? <laughs> so the comments came rolling in. Ironically, Meek slides in saying, they say the third baby mama be the one. <laughs> so, Which uh, one of my friends who is like, a social media detective she swears up and down that meek secretly has a girl pregnant uh a girl from philly pregnant and he already has a third baby mom but i wanted to talk about this because a dude that i the, my very first bur- boyfriend in high school um obviously when we were in high school we didn't have kids later on we reconnected and he had three kids by three baby moms and this dude literally it's told crazy. me you can be the fourth baby mom, but my first wife. <laughs> so, 
The first thing he, well, I guess you know what he's working with. He had to throw that out there. <laughs> because when B. Simone slided in and said, I'll be your third baby mom, but the first wife, I had like deja vu Man. of this guy that said this. So I really wanted to unpack that. Like, I mean, obviously, none of us on this pod have multiple baby moms, but what do you think is happening here? Like, you meet this guy, you know he has all these baby moms. He has, obviously, there has to be drama somewhere along with it. Do people really sign up to be the third, fourth, fifth baby mom? Like, what do you think happens there? Love is a powerful thing. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> love is love powerful. or love? Is uh, it love? Uh, I mean... It also depends on that person's situation too, because I mean, what if they're coming in with a couple, you know, baby fathers, like how can you judge somebody on like, you know, their situation with uh, about to have three baby moms. So I kind of think it depends on that, but I don't know. I, I, I really think that it's a rough thing to go into though, no matter what, like, right. It, even if it's just one, I feel like it's like a really like rough thing to do. So, yes. So, oh, I, oh, ironically, oh, uh, Paloma Ford is joining us. <laughs> uh, hello, Paloma. How are you? Hi, guys. Why is it ironically? Oh, well, we were talking about Meek Mill. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> You like popped in at the perfect time so we could segue. Uh, welcome to the Mina's House podcast. I'm Mina. Say what? I'm What's Shana up, Mina? Thank you, guys. Garnet Briscoe, aka Sherlock Homeboy. What's up, Briscoe? And I saw Shauna. Is that correct? Shana. 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 And Dex the One. <laughs> oh, That's we're. Dex. We're Dex the one today, Dex. <laughs> so, Dex has like three names. So. Okay, okay. Hello, Paloma. Hi, How guys. are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? We're great. You Hi. look beautiful. Where are you going, yeah. girl? Hello. Girl, to the, to the grocery store. <laughs> like that? Are you looking for I mean, grocery that, store? listen, at this point... You know yeah, what? No. You on what? to something there. What grocery? You just gotta go to the right grocery stores. You gotta go to Air One. You gotta go. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> wait. So clearly, I'm I'm broke because I go to Aldi, <laughs> Trader Joe's. So what's Air One? I mean, you just might find a daddy that you know hey. eats right. Eats right. <laughs> What? Man. You know what's crazy? I, I forgot who told me that they met their, like, their, there's this girl that was dating this guy during the quarantine, and she says she met him during the pandemic. And, and I'm like, how do you meet somebody during a quarantine during the pandemic? She said at the grocery sto store, girl. So she went dressed like you. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was lying, but now I need to try it. I'm, I'm going ahead. I might take my own advice. <laughs> <laughs> so Paloma, uh, you, uh, so let's get right into the Meek Mill thing because I, that's how I first found out about you. You were on his song. What was it like six years ago now? It's a long time ago. It, it was, it was about five years, something like that. Yeah. And, um, it, the song is called, I don't know. And that was yes. kind of my introduction to you. Yes. And I was like, wow, this is beautiful. She can sing, you. you know, uh, was that like your first major platform that you know really yeah that was definitely the first major platform for me um <clears throat> definitely you know where it was like just kind of overnight things started you know shifting in a major way when when that song dropped so for sure really he has that much power to shift your career like that I overnight mean, i mean it was you know it was his it was his single um, Ross mm -hmm. was really behind it. Um, you know, Dreams Worth Mar More Than Money, I think was um, really, really highly anticipated at the time. And, you know, he was, he was going on, um, you know, radio stations and, and hyping me up. And I just, it felt like I had a lot of support, you know, not only from him, but the people around him. So it was definitely, it, it was definitely a big time for me. Yeah. So just just in COVID, 
and we've been asking everybody like what's the one thing that they've like taken on in COVID. So for you, I know you're an artist, so artists, you probably are continuing to create, but like what's the one thing that you would have never thought you have done or you got back to doing in COVID? Mm, I never thought I've done or got back to doing. I definitely got back in touch with nature more. Um, I always do my little hikes, but it really, it really not only forced me, but you know, allowed me the time to do other do other things in nature that really you know have like grounded me and um kind of you know helped me with my mental space as far as like dealing with covid dealing with you know music and and everything else so definitely getting back out in nature was like a big thing for me this this time around or this pandemic i should say it's funny you say that because I, I was stalking your social media before the <laughs> interview and like your posts are very positive and it's interesting because we were talking about our timelines earlier today and we're talking about how like you can't look at somebody's page without seeing politics or porn <laughs> one or the other right. yours i feel like it's nothing but like really positive and encouraging tweets like how do you keep that mindset um you know even even on the days that I have, you know, bad days or, or I'm going through stuff, um, I just think about, like, what would somebody want to hear from me, I, you know? And, and not, not only that, but um, I just feel like there's so much negativity, you know, on a daily basis. We've been going through so much as a collective. Mm -hmm. um, I know that in, instead of talking about, you know, the negative, um, trying to, you know, just put something out there that might encourage somebody else. And it's like, if, if you are going through anything similar to what I'm going through, I know that this is going to hit home. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, I, I'm very, you know, interested in politics and everything else. But I, I have realized, especially through this, you know, how um, important it is to use our platform wisely. And, um, you know, I, I, was, I was doing the retweets, you know, the Breonna Taylors, the this and that. And, uh, you know, I'm a mother. Um, it, it hits very close to home every single time. And, um, you know, I weep, I cry with everybody else, but, um, I also look past um, the narrative of, yeah. of what I feel like, you know, they're trying to push. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of took myself out of doing the retweets with, with all of that. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to feel how I feel. And I'm going to hold a place for, you know, the families that, you know, are losing people. But I, I'm going to use my platform to just continue to encourage people and, and say things that I hope, you know, are hitting home and make making people feel better because that's what I feel like I need. So mm -hmm. yeah. And also I love that after some of your posts, you'll do that emoji that looks like it looks like glitter or like I, I can't explain it, but it's like the, <laughs> the twinkle. I, I, the twinkle. A little the yeah. Twinkle, the <laughs> uh so Paloma, you have a, a tape out right now. It's called the X tapes. So was it difficult? you know, kind of going through that in the pandemic and releasing all that? I mean, was it an emotional experience? Because a lot of the music is about love and, and I yeah. don't know if it's particularly about your love life, but th there are topics that, you know, it's like you, you when you're dealing with an ex or you're dealing with, with a significant other, sometimes mentally it's hard to get through some of these things. Um, I definitely, those are all very personal stories. Um, I did write this whole project before the pandemic. Um, so yeah, originally it was supposed to come out a lot earlier and we definitely went through a lot of um, obstacles getting the project out, getting, uh, getting visuals shot. Um, you know, we, we, de we definitely, we definitely had to go go around a lot of things. Are you guys still with me? Am I still yeah, with you guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, more so, more so putting the, putting the project out, a lot of things were shut down. So 
you know, um, renting things, uh, you know, just the was, typical. Was um, it frustrating also, though? Was it, was it like a frustrating? Fr- yeah. Definitely frustrating. Definitely frustrating. But um, fortunately for me, the kids that I work with, everybody's just super, um, you know, passionate about their craft and and willing to get creative. So that's what we definitely had to do, you know, the last couple of months. But it, it, it's, it kind of made the process, I think, more memorable for sure. <laughs> yeah, right. You're never going to forget this practice. Right. No, <laughs> no, I'm not. I was going to say, so the visual for All For Nothing with Rick Ross, so you guys taped that during the pand- pandemic? We just, we did it in August. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You had so, to get tested or anything? <laughs> um, I flew to Atlanta, which is pretty open, so I didn't have to get tested. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Ross was like, we can do the video, but it's going to be in the A. I'm like, all right, so that's, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. You said you wrote, you know, all of these songs, right? So these are like true stories, true emotions. Um, I listened to the album. The song that I really enjoyed was uh, Heartbreak on the West Side. Yes. You know, I, I never want to wish bad or anything, you know, anybody ever again, but I don't know what mold that got you in for that. You need to do that again. I let it okay. <laughs> that song was really um, good. Yeah, I wrote, I wrote or co-wrote all of the, all of the records. Um, I had, I had a few writers, Vori, um, shout out to Vori. He, he wrote one of the records on it and um, um, Dasmin, she, co-wrote and wrote she wrote all for nothing but heartbreak on the west side i wrote and um yeah it was it was definitely a heartbreaking time but what's crazy about heartbreak on the west side is um we finished recording that song and included the guitar solo um the day a year before the the year before Kobe died the same day I'm sorry Mm. so it was as we were putting the tape together earlier in the year and um, that memory had come up of being in the studio on the same day that Kobe passed it was like we have to put this on the tape this has to go so what was that day like because you're in LA right the worst day ever Mm. It was literally, um, I, I live in the valley. I live in, um, I live like right where they were flying over. And um, I am personally, you know, Kobe was like my hero. Yeah. Um, Kobe and Shaq, I've been Lakers girl my whole life being from LA. So um, yeah, I mean, one of your heroes passing yeah. tragically, suddenly not far from you right i mean literally right up the road for me um that was probably like one of the worst days ever for sure you know i haven't been there since it happened because obviously it was like february and then the pandemic happened in march but like how how is the city changed like are there visible billboards or statues like i knew they had di- they were doing things to the staples center and outside of the staples center but is it like i remember you know every time i go to la there's these beautiful murals of like michael jackson mm-hmm. and you know that's part of the culture out there yeah. how has the scenery changed like the city changed and in and in honoring his memory um you can definitely you can't you can't go to many blocks without seeing a Kobe mural for sure. You know, Kobe and Gigi, um, you know, same with Nip. And um, I think, you know, I think it's still very, very, very surreal out here. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't believe that it's really sunk in for any of us, especially given the circumstances of like what followed, you know? So it's like, okay that happened and then it just keeps getting crazier right and you know and then on top of that the you know the basketball season i'm like i said i'm a huge lakers fan so even them being in the finals but they're in this you know weird dome like none of it feels real i I agree yeah none of it feels real 
to shift a little bit, you did talk about idols and like yes. not in the, the, the happiest mode, but like in a the, in the more chipper, more happier mode, talking about your idols. Have you been in LA and been in the industry now? Have you met any of your like idols that you grew up liking or loving or people that you start to like now and you met them in person? How was that experience and who was it? Um, yeah, being from Los Angeles, you meet everyone. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably less people that I haven't met, but I will share um, the one time I met Beyonce. I knew um, it. I felt it. <laughs> I felt. I felt, I felt, I felt I there was a Beyonce story be Beyonce. coming. Be I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, I, I met Beyonce. Um, actually, it was before my career started, and um, I was at a birthday party for Solange, and um, Ty Hunter, I knew him, and, and you know, he works with B very Ty, closely. Ty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so he was like, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the introduction, and I was like, ah, and she was just so sweet to me. She was very, very sweet to me. And she said, you're so pretty. And I was like, you're so pretty. <laughs> and, and that was it. It was really, really short. Um, but I will say, you know, that memory stayed with me forever because she was very, very sweet to me. Um, I can't say that for all of the idols that you meet. Talk you know, about it. Yeah. A lot of times you wish you hadn't. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Ru it like ruins your childhood a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Like Shayna knows my favorite story with a certain basketball player, <laughs> but it's like you grow up just like listening either to music or idolizing. In my case, it's like an athlete that I just loved. I wore his jersey. I like love. You're better guy. now, Mina. You're past. The and then you better. then you meet them, and they're like mean, and you're like. Yeah. Oh. My childhood yeah. just got destroyed. You're better now. Yeah. It might have been a bad day. <laughs> yeah, it might every, have been a bad day. Every time I see him, it's a bad day then. Good, Garnett. so funny. I don't know what just happened. Can you see me? Garnett, oh, yeah, yeah, we see you. you. He's always mesmerized. Every time we got a pretty girl on the pod. Uh, 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 yeah, <laughs> different. She's, she's very gorgeous. Very, very oh, gorgeous. You. If you are going to the supermarkets around here, I'm going there every week. I'm there <laughs> well, I'm going to need to see certain things in your cart, sir. Like, like, like what? what? Like what? Like what you're looking for. See, if I told you, then it's like ruining right, so listen. it. Right, because she's going to go to the market ne tomorrow and every guy go ahead and cart. Right? Exactly. <laughs> listen, I got fruit and I always got water. Is it a certain that's, type of water you look that's for? That's a start. That's a start. So, she, she needs um, to see a magnum. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't. You're the instigator. You're the instigator. Uh, sorry, so. Wait, so I'm gonna give you backstory, Paloma, because we literally were just talking about Tyga and his manhood all over the internet. So that's why my brain is like in that mode, you know. Well, we were just <laughs> talking about again, just very a lot of nudity too, right. on our social media and everything right. like that. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh my bad. You were uh you were signed um uh, Master P. Um so I wanted to know like what was that experience like, you know, coming from somebody that's just a mogul and a hustler and somebody that's really important in our culture. Like what was that time like? Yeah, I signed to Master P for management for a little while. Um Master P's Master P. Like yeah. he drops gems at, you know, <clears throat> in every conversation um i have nothing bad to say about him he 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 taught me a lot just just listening to his stories and hustling and stuff like that we we definitely had a different vision for like where i was trying to go and and just kind of like his ways of going about things musically um for for now and like what's going on but um i actually met him on the set of um never heard my father speak it was an independent film that he was in and he 
got me um, a small role in that. And, and so we kind of like started our relationship there. And um, we, did, we did do a few things. I did do a few episodes on um, growing up hip hop and, you know. I he, remember, I remember, yeah. okay, yep. Yeah, and um, P's awesome. Like he's just, he's just always um, in that mode to share. And, and he just kind of like took me in. I was around Symphonique and, you know, all those guys and Romeo, Romeo's su super sweet. And, you know, I, I, I'm just, I'm that type of person that like loves to be around and, and I'm gonna ask the questions. I'm gonna ask the stories of the nineties and yeah. you know what I mean? And just, and, and just kind of like take, take in all that stuff. So that's, like, that's yeah. kind of like where that start you know, started and stopped, but it was, it was a good time. Would you do a reality show like the Love and Hip Hops, like, or any, any of those type of shows? No, that's, no. no. <laughs> well, but, but on that, like, you know, and I know you talked about, the, you, you know, meeting him on set, would you transition or is that something that is of interest to act more? I know you model as well. I know you yeah. did um, New York Fashion Week right before like COVID yeah. hit. You know, yes. So is that something you would like to transition to? Not reality, but, you know, just you know, acting for sure. Yeah. Um, before, <clears throat> before COVID, I was also reading a part for an independent film. Um, so it is something that I have been actively, you know, um, just getting more into, but, you know, my music and, and especially since I've been away has kind of taken first priority. Um, and then fashion is like something that just, always like calls me back. I really don't, I don't really try too hard, but at the same time, it's just something that I love and I do. So, um, yeah. And you're good at it. Thank you. Yeah, I was gonna ask, do you style yourself? You always look so, I mean, at least on social media, you know, you're so well I do for, most, for the most part, yeah. yeah. yeah I was gonna say, so I saw you, met you, saw you at a Revolt Summit last year this time. And you yeah. were every day. I was like, dang, okay. Like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No, it's it's always since I was a little girl, it's just been a passion of mine. Um, I really hated when people used to call me model. I'm like, no, I, you know, I grew up studying supermodels. I am not one of those. Like, I just really have a passion for fashion, but you know, I respect what models do, and I can never do that full time. Um they have a very, you know, grueling life. It's it's hard, um, but yeah, fashion is is my thing, and I'm definitely gonna get more into acting for sure. You're so humble. It's like <laughs> it's amazing. Like it's wow. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh -huh. Um, I was very surprised when I was reading that you used to be like a background singer for Macy Gray. Um, I, did I, I was very surprised by that. <laughs> um. <laughs> they say you know they they used background singer but it was it was more so like i did some backgrounds on vocals on her album i never um <clears throat> excuse me i never performed with her or you know did anything like that i just happened to be at the right place at the right time i was like 19 years old and um <clears throat> she needed some background vocals and i did it once and she called me back to the studio and i ended up being on like three songs on the album but um yeah, I think that they need to say she did backgrounds, like right, she's not right, like I was right. like in the background. Like, yeah, <laughs> I mean that's what I imagine. You're on tour, right, and like, I think a lot wow. of people do. Yeah. Yeah, and it was surprising because her register is very deep, you know, mm -hmm. and her music is different. So not that yeah. you can sing background vocals for anybody who makes music, but it was just surprising to me, you know? No, that was def that was my that was like my introduction into the business. That was my first paycheck from Interscope. Um, you know, that was when I was really just like, okay, I know I want to do music. I was, you know, trying to get myself situated and in, in going into studios. And that was at Record Plant. Like my first big job was at Record Plant and um Will I am was a, you know she was signed to Will I Am at the time? Justin Timberlake was there. Cameron Diaz, like the Pussycat Dolls, were down the hall. CeeLo, it was like 
mind blowing. So, so, so when you said that you've met everybody, you really mean that. <laughs> no, I really mean that. <laughs> so it really sounds like you have such a history and you've been doing so much for so long. Like, what is the hardest thing right now? Like, where, where, how do you get to that next level? Um, I think it's, it's decisions of like, what, what is next level to you, you know? And for me, um, I've chosen to stay independent. Um, I like having my freedom. I like having my freedom to create and, um, you know, being from LA, you have a lot of friends that are in the business and, and have a lot of horror stories and not to say that that's everybody's right. story, but, um, I don't know. It's I a lot therapy. of people's stories. Yeah. It's a lot of people's stories. <laughs> yes. And uh, I did my first project through um, through Empire. And, you know, I didn't really have any complaints. And I just, like I said, it, it's just kind of like what, what, what means the most to you and, and, you know, where you see yourself. And right now, I just feel like I'm in such a beautiful position because... I have, um, you know, I have big artists that are willing to work with me and, and fuck with me if I'm allowed to say that. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm really just, I'm humbled and blessed every time, you know, I'm able to continue to work with big artists and, and other, um, you know, big names. But I like, like I said, I like having my independence I like being able to um, move at my own pace. And <clears throat> I think it's really um, important, especially in a time like this where, you know, people are just putting music out left and right. And, you know, but it's nothing, it's like how many songs are memorable, how many things are like really, really, really sticking with us. And um, I hope that I can be part of, you know, the movement to change that narrative again. But um, either way for me, I'm like, if I can start my own label and, and, and help other artists kind of navigate through this shit, it would be really, really nice. <laughs> and it's hard. Yeah. It's you know, hard. Even going back to what Duck said earlier, just about like your vibe, the energy is like very peaceful. What like what books are you reading at the moment? Um I'm <clears throat> currently reading um How to Restore Your Aura. Um, <laughs> yeah, a little about that. <laughs> it's, I mean, well, I say it's basic stuff that I already know, but, um, you know, just kind of taking back your energy and, um, you know, being more aware and conscious of, um, you know, the, the energy that you are giving out versus, right. you know, what you're taking in and, <clears throat> I've always been like super sensitive. That's something else, you know, about me in the industry. It's always, you know, being around a lot of energy and different energies has always kind of affected me. And I never really pinpointed it until, you know, more recently. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, so, you know, drawing back in certain things and just, like I said, you know, just kind of replacing, replacing certain things that you don't really, really need with things that you actually do really need. And, you know, that's giving me um, <clears throat> just kind of like a new focus and 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 some clarity and stuff. So it is weird, like being in the industry. People just have weird energy, and I don't even know what that's about. I don't even know if it's like people trying to be cool, or it's like you know, in in Philly they say Joe, like you're not, you know, you're not trying to be like a clout chaser, or and and, and it comes off as really weird sometimes. People aren't genuine. Sometimes they don't show genuine love. It's like the weirdest thing, right? And I can't even imagine being in LA, you know, and having to experience all of that, you know? Yeah. It's a, it, it can be a vicious cycle for sure. Um, I, one thing I'll say is like being from LA is like a blessing in that sense because, you know, A, I was able to experience some of that early on, but B, you're like, you know, we're, this is our land. So I don't really, you know, immerse myself in Hollywood too much. I, I really try to like, you know, be at the beach. I'm, I'm a homebody. I'm a big homebody. So I'm home a lot. But um, <clears throat> I think a lot of people that, you know, move out here and, you know, they're trying to get in the industry and whatnot, you know, you're, you're trying to 
put your best face on and, and do what you need to do. Right. So I get it, but it does become a vicious cycle that people can get lost in for sure. So being a homebody, the quarantine didn't bother you too much, did it? <laughs> only, the only part of quarantine that's really, really bothered me, well, two things. A, the mask thing is like... That ain't your thing. <laughs> yeah. Girl, don't be out here not wearing a mask. <laughs> no, I wear, I wear it, you know, because... At the end of the day, I, like I'm super rebellious, but I, I have a son, so I am conscious of that. I am conscious of, you know, my family and I like to be around my family. So I am conscious of that, <clears throat> but I, I'm not gonna lie and say that I fucking hate it. I hate it. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> Nobody especially likes it. it. Especially traveling, like when you were and going traveling. to Atlanta, like that's the worst. Like you yeah. literally feel like, like I feel like guys understand now, like what it feels like to take off a bra. Cause you take it off and you're just like, oh, yes, God, just like, yes. Maybe the men should just wear them. <laughs> right. oh, no, nah, I'm not going for that one. Uh -uh. You gotta be a two way thing. No way. <laughs> no, being on being on the plane and wearing a mask is like. It's a new I level can't of patience. too much. I had to go to bed. I was like, I can't. I couldn't even like go to the and bathroom. And then you wake up and you and you still have the mask on. You're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Paloma. Thank you so much for joining us. Make thank sure you, you check you. out our project. Yeah. It's called X Tapes, and we look forward to all the stuff you're gonna have coming up. Okay, we'll yes, go see you some you movies. Yeah. It's some fashion things and some music things, okay? More music. I have more music coming, so check that out. And I love you guys on XM. I love XM Radio. Oh, thank so you. I appreciate it. Thank you guys oh, so much. Oh, thank you. You listen. Yes. I do. Of course. I definitely, I hate, I hate the regular radio. So XM is like the only thing I listen to. Oh, thank you. I'm going to shout you out, girl. Thank you. <laughs> bye, girl. All right, bye, guys. Bye, girl. Good to see you guys. <laughs> She's sweet. So sweet. The energy. She, the energy was there. Like, yeah. You know what it is? Look, look okay. Look at Garnett. He's in love. It's, it's the, the energy was there with Garnett. Uh, it's the background. Anytime somebody gets on, they have like a real cool like background and there's some purple in there. Amazing. Yeah, you're true. That's true. <laughs> Wait, that so, print so we never talked about Skip. So what did y'all think? Oh, amazing. Girl. I'm telling you, the purple background. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I was telling y'all, it's it's weird. Like, it's not a weird energy. It's just such a like heaven. I don't want to say heavenly because you it's know, so peaceful. You're drawn in. The, right. the aura is so encompassing that you're just like right. in it. It like mm. takes over the room. Yeah. I think it, 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 there's actually energy there. And people are always like, no matter who you're around, there's always some energy. And I disagree with it. I feel like sometimes I'm around people and there's nothing there. But like being around like him and like having the interview with him and even the interview with Paloma and you guys too, I feel like there's some actual energy there. There's no like, nobody's dead behind the eyes. Like there's actually mm -hmm. something there that, you, that pulls you in a little bit. Yeah. Mm. All right, so let's kind of wrap things up real quick. I really wanted to talk about OnlyFans um, because that's kind of been the thread in our conversation. Uh, and I just think what's happening is so many more people are joining because people are making a lot of money. I mean, I, I read that Cardi B is making $8 million Legend. on OnlyFans. Right. So it's like, I wanted to talk about dating someone on OnlyFans. Like, if you're on OnlyFans, does that mean you're a hoe? Like, would you date someone who's on there? Like I, I had seen a meme when it first came out and this guy was like fighting with his girl. I don't even think it was a meme. I think it was a real, real video. And you guys probably saw it too. The guy is fighting with his girl and he's like, I thought I told you to get off OnlyFans. And she's like, I got to pay my bills. Like, what you mean? So um, I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on that. I, I personally think it depends. I think it depends. If you're a Cardi B or even a Safari and and even some of the strippers, let's just say, like, you know, some of the, a lot of people make their live, livelihood and money off of performing, however it is. And, you know, this is now a way where they can still do that. Um, and I don't mean no harm by this. Don't come at me like y'all, we're coming at me some more. But if you're like a nine to five guy, and then you just decide you're just gonna make an OnlyFans 
and it like I just think it's different. Like, yeah, if you are already did some Shayna. stuff, no, like if you already did some stuff and had like a personality out there and you were moving that way, it, it I think it just depends on what you're doing. But like, if you were like a nine to five guy and then you just decide you just want to be on OnlyFans doing sexual nature stuff, let's just say that I would definitely have a problem. If you're like Garnett and you're a comedian and you start an OnlyFans and you start doing it, I'm not gonna have a problem with that. Like, so I guess that's what I'm saying is it depends on who the person is and what they're doing on there and who they are kind of as a personality. I actually think the opposite. I feel like I don't understand why someone like Cardi B is making eight million dollars off of Only OnlyFans. Like, and, and no, but what I'm saying is I would think it it would be for people who don't make a lot of money and this is the alternate really you're selling your ass is what you're doing i mean right. and let me say this i am not on only fans i don't know what's on there but my interpretation of what is on there is people are putting up suggestive either photos it doesn't mean you're gay i mean uh you're you're naked all the time but there are suggestive photos maybe some nudity maybe some porn kind of stuff but, but i would how it started that's right, how it started, for but sure. I I would feel like that would be an easy way for people who don't make a whole bunch of money to make money. I feel like the opposite. Like I wouldn't be surprised if more nine to five people were on there just because they're not making enough money working at McDonald's or Wendy's or whatever. You know, I I, I think you're right, Mina. I do think you're. I agree with what you're saying as far as like people who are on there probably should be the ones who need to make the extra money. The only thing is like. To Shayna's point, the celebrities get on there and they make their money because they already have a name. You know what I mean? Like, that's what they do. These people who work regular nine to five jobs, they get on there and they're posting their porn and their, their suggestive videos and pictures and stuff. And like, nobody's paying for it. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> you just, you just, no, they couldn't build a they, they couldn't build a following. How about if a guy is like super good looking, oh, he got an eight pack? So, I got a question. So you got it. So so help me go through OnlyFans because I don't have one either. So what you're saying, Dex, is I if I started the OnlyFans, I Shayna have to have a video of me doing whatever or pictures, and then the hope that somebody is paying. Yeah, they have to pay for it. They have to pay to see it. It's a it's a it's a subscription service. For to your point, I gotta already do it. Like I gotta have it ready for you to come view. Like you going on demand. Yeah. Decide. So I had to already have done it. That's the only way you can get on there and so see yeah, people's they, stuff. They might be doing it for nothing. Go ahead. Just look at the social media followers. Some people will have like 500 followers and you jump on OnlyFans. Like, who do you think is paying for that? If you're yeah, correct. but <laughs> like, yeah, but then that that means that TikTok would never be famous. Like TikTok is infamous for random people going viral. Why wouldn't the guy with the huge anaconda and the eight pack? Because, you know, be popular on OnlyFans. Because TikTok is free. Right. I, I might not know about the guy with the huge anaconda on OnlyFans because I don't even, I just had to ask you to do it. I haven't even been, I know of it. I haven't been on there because I'm not paying for none of it. Well, some, one of us needs to log on because I'm pretty sure there's a way we for, you all to, better for you to, subscription. for you to, for, no, you don't have to pay to log on. People have to pay to see your stuff. Oh, okay, okay. So you're providing the content for free. People got to pay to see it. But you also have to pay to see other people's stuff, too. Right. But if I wanted to upload a titty pic, I don't have to pay to do it. Oh, no, 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 no. No. Oh, you talking about us log on like that? I'm saying someone needs to log on and see what it's like, because I'm pretty sure there's a search feature. (laughs) So you can search for people based on what you want to look for, right? Garnett, when you log on tomorrow, when you Garnett, when you create this OnlyFans page, <laughs> let us know <laughs> how it's working out. Right. Listen. Because I didn't the purpose of this was to if would you date someone? Like say yeah. you meet a guy and you're dating or a girl and you're dating her and she, you she she or he says they're making side money on OnlyFans. Like, is that is is that a you know some a reason to cut someone off? Uh, like I kind of to go back to what Shana, it it depends on a person at that point and just what you're able to handle. But the way I look at it, the way it's becoming, it's more mainstream. It's starting to become its own like social media like platform, and that's why you see people, you know, bigger celebrities now using it in different ways. Because like we spoke before, just about how Instagram doesn't pay for anything. 
So a lot of the time, you know, people, you're paying $20 and you're seeing the exact same thing that you were going to see for free on Instagram. So well, you know, and I, it's funny you say that because I actually thought about signing up just, you know, to kind of be on there. Um, <laughs> first of all, it's my job to be where people are at. Okay. So I'm like, TikTok, I have to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, but I, and obviously what you put out is up to you, you yeah, know? But- but it's more so the perception now. So like- and, and that's where I was, that's exactly where I was oh. going. My hesitation was, I actually want to get a real reporter job. So how would I look right, right. if they you're find like, my oh, OnlyFans you're, account? You're, you're a resume, OnlyFans? Yeah, but- it, that that all uh, that depends on how you break it down and how you use it because if if, if someone's kind of going to like judge you for that i i feel like they just don't know exactly what that platform is and what it's turning into at the moment because you could do it and uh, instead of doing a gofundme why not just post your instagram and stuff on there and build your fan base that way like that's just another opportunity to you know, try to get some money in a place where no one else was giving you money at. So you know it, what? And that's exactly what I was gonna do. I put up all these cute pictures of me in a bathing suit, for, you know, selfies. Could so my experiment is: can I put the same thing on OnlyFans and make money off of it? I want to do that. I mean, that's that's <laughs> and that's but I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea for your they, they, Wait it's a not- minute. So you just said, Shayna. That if someone's like Safari or... Yeah, but he's not trying to be a reporter and be taken seriously. I'm not taking Safari seriously. <laughs> I'm going to take like you, you seriously. You see, you see what I'm saying? I don't have a nine to five. But I'm a public you're figure. You're in a different lane where I look at you differently. I classify you, even as a celebrity, you're a different box. Like Safari's box is like... He's a reality okay. star. He's We've a reality always star. known him to be not yeah. serious. Black saying. China's making eleven million dollars. We've always known Black China to be what she gonna be. Girl, <laughs> girlfriend gonna do what she gonna do. Why can't I make a couple of you know a stack <laughs> extra on OnlyFans? I think to Garnett's point, like you can do that, right? But when, when people look you up, they're not gonna see that you posted the cute bikini mm-hmm. pictures. They're just gonna say, Mina say what? Only fans. That's all they're right. going to say. No idea what you posted on there. So the mindset is going to be like, well, she on there having sex because that's what people are doing on Only Fans. I do have this other question. Do you have to have naked photo? No. You don't have to, okay. no. Okay. That's you, what you I'm saying. On there. You, you don't have to, but... And, and would know. To go I mean, you have an Only Fans page? Huh? <laughs> you know a lot about just Only Fans. <laughs> I support black businesses. Yes, for all of them. Heard that. <laughs> it's a pandemic. I can give you six dollars a month. That's fine. But, but I was gonna say, Mina, to your point of how it started. It started to be just, and I remember when Little Duval said it. As soon as that, like the pandemic started, and he was like, "All right, don't judge me, because I might have one." But it started like a really a lot of the strippers who couldn't go strip in the clubs and couldn't do. But that was just my one thing about what I've heard about them was they were doing more than what they would normally do in a club. And I guess, again, they felt like they had to, to kind of convince Engage, you right. to give that, them that money. Um, but I, I, that is how it started. I do feel like it's definitely evolving now. It, it is almost becoming mainstream to the point where those people probably are not going to make money. Because why am I going to pay to see, I, I don't even know what any strip clubs around here are called. Well, let's say Shayna's Boom Boom Room stripper, and then I could see maybe Cardi B or Suki or somebody doing something like you might spend your money there. But then that's my other question: Where y'all getting all this money from to be getting these people all this money? <laughs> Child, there is out there. What, I was gonna say that it just shows you what people spend their money on. <laughs> Where did y'all get it from? Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I got two mortgages. So, <laughs> not I mean, spending that PUA money on OnlyFans. <laughs> well, Hello. You know, so, I mean, Give me your so, stimulus check, the second one. You're not getting one. You're not getting one, yeah. They talking about it. No. Um, oh, no, he shut it down. That's what they said. They talking about it. Again. So I read that today. Yeah, refresh your, your feed. Yeah, Donald refresh it. You, you must have caught up in the last... <laughs> He said they weren't, listen, the, the they weren't talking about it. 
but someone shut it down. First of all, he got corona. He should be in the bed. <laughs> Why are you doing shutting it's stuff a, down? It's like a threat. <gasps> yeah, look, look, look at her face. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a threat. Mm. He said until after the election, like we're kids, and that's the punishment. No, he need to be voted out. He I'm immature like, as hell. Okay. We will talk about it after the election. Right. Right. Anyway, uh, so the consensus is no to dating someone on OnlyFans. I'm not gonna do it, but I have no issues with sex workers though. <laughs> so okay, Dex, you have a fiance. Say your fiance go on there to pay for the wedding. No. Do we won't be no wedding. <laughs> <laughs> How about she lose her job? She go on there to make some change to pay your rent. You could go ahead and get unemployment. There's options. There um, the thing is about first unemployment. of all, have you ever been on unemployment? It's like a hundred dollars a week, Dexter. No. Well then I'll step it up then. I'll go get another job or something like that. But to be honest with you, the only thing I don't like about OnlyFans is the excuse of like, well, I need to make some extra money, so I'm gonna do this. Like you're hoeing. <laughs> I don't think I don't. I don't have it. And again, I don't have an issue with sex workers. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. All of it is like, not sex work, though. Yeah. They call it. They call it sex so, work. Some of it is, but if I'm just putting up sexy pictures, am I a sex worker? Yeah, that's what they call it. That's so your like, industry. Okay, I know what you're saying, sex workers. But like, if Cardi B is just putting up extra sexy pictures that she would actually regularly put up on Instagram, she's not like a sex. She was a sex worker. But she's not a she sex always worker. always gets her industry. I don't so, know. So you think everyone on OnlyFans is a sex worker? It's a party doing sex work. I'm just asking for a friend. Yeah, I don't think, I'm not saying they're actually having sex, but I think from the industry, like that's what they call it. It's like a sex working industry. But y'all know what Safari doing? That's what I'm asking. So putting up sexy pictures is sex work? If you're getting paid for it, like on a subscription service like that, I, I would assume. But that. why? We put it up for free. Why not get paid for it? That's okay to get paid for, but just know. But it's not sex, sex work. work industry. So what if you decide to put a podcast on there? Is that sex work? No, because, because that's possible. Sex. How about if I do this podcast in my lingerie and put it on OnlyFans? <laughs> I think that would be sex work. Are you serious? <laughs> I disagree. I have it in I think you have to actually be sexual. <laughs> you have to figure out how to get this only thing. <laughs> so so just, just real quick, because I know we have to run, but it says a sex worker is a person who is employed in a sex industry. The term is used in reference to all those in all areas of the sex industries, including those who provide direct sexual services, as well as staff and management of such industries. Right. So I think me putting up a sexy picture isn't a sex service. You're doing it. It might be a sex in service. <laughs> it's not a sex service. Oh my God, Dexter. Let me show you a picture I would put up on my OnlyFans if I had one. Oh, you want to show this for free? I'm just saying. Yeah, I won't put this one up. Yeah, because you don't want to be a sex worker. <laughs> <laughs> so I would put this picture up. Is that a sex? You know, I'm not giving you $6.99 for a picture with people to go. No. <laughs> okay. You can't put that on OnlyFans. Why not? That's for Instagram. You can put that on Facebook. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I can put that whatever I want on OnlyFans. You're not getting that extra G with that picture. That's yes, I saying. am. Who's <laughs> paying for that? I'm cute. My fans. <laughs> Definitely oh, cute. Like only my fans could come <laughs> and see this picture. Hold on. Let me try to find a little cute. No, I'm sorry, Bart. Do you get notifications when these people I don't know. Them? I'm not on there, girl. I'm sure there's a little thing that goes cha-ching when yeah, someone like pays you. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, Garnett, it is your job to figure out what's going on on OnlyFans, okay? I'll ask somebody. I'll do my due diligence. You're not going to go on there? I go no, on he's, there. I'll, I'll, no, he's not going to share us his age. That's what it is. <laughs> no. <laughs> What'd you say? He doesn't want us to know his page. Like he's on there. He's on there getting money. He just doesn't want us to know like his profile. And, and those uh, leather speedo mm -hmm. drawers. Mm -hmm. Those leather chaps, <laughs> whatever they were. Hmm. I'm on it. All right. Well, we'll see. <laughs> you give us an update next week. I'm on it. You're really on there. Mm-hmm. You're a liar. We're going to be dropping next week. <laughs> this is why we got to add music into the pie. Well, we can't right now because of the streaming rights anyway. But I was about to say, because I keep hearing uh, uh, Beyonce and Savage in my head. 
<laughs> when that demon time, she might start our only fan. All right, girl. Well, you keep singing yeah. that in the head because you ain't paying for no royalties. <laughs> last I checked. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, it's the hundred and forty eighth episode of the Mina's House podcast. Thank you to Paloma Ford for joining. I mean, to say what? I'm Shayla B. Sherlock Homeboy, aka Garnet Briscoe. Dex the one. No, aka Dexter Stucky. Aka Dexter. St well, it depends because y'all talking about OnlyFans. I don't want people to search me. <laughs> uh, according to you, if you're on OnlyFans, you're a sex worker. And we respect sex workers over here. Shout out to all the sex workers. I don't think everyone on Only uh, everyone on OnlyFans is a sex worker. I just want to put that disclaimer out in case I decide. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'm sorry.